Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about the notion of parallel arrays and basically this is when you have related data in two or more arrays and you can process the arrays in parallel. Um, it may sound like a brand new technique, it's really nothing, it's just kind of more of the same of what we've been doing, but instead of having one array in the program, we'll have two or three arrays in the program, and really that's it, it, everything else is identical. So parallel arrays are easy because if you can write a program that processes one array, as we've done already in a couple of arrays, then it's very easy to just add two or three or four or more arrays to that program. It's like once the the nuts and bolts of the program are in place, it's just a matter of adding more arrays. So for example, I want you to imagine this. Um, I, I put an index column here, if you can imagine. We're still going to go with the gelato example, 10 elements max. And behind the scenes, those arrays are going to be indexed zero through nine, or with subscripts zero through nine. And um, we'll have one array, which we'll call flavors or something like that, which will store the strings that are the flavors of the gelato. And now the parallel array is going to be a calories array, which we have not done yet. So we're going to add an, an array for calories and then put the respective calories for each of the flavors. Now we have to be careful when we're populating the arrays. I have to make sure that the mango gets the 200 calories and let's say the peanut butter, which is the highest, gets the 360. I have to keep track of which flavor has how many calories because the compiler isn't going to keep track. The compiler doesn't know about flavors and calories. You, the programmer, have to be careful when populating data for parallel arrays. So let's take a look at the code. So I, um, I have the uh, const num flavors, and I've initialized that to 10. Of course, I can change it later if we decide to expand and get more flavors, but we'll leave it at 10. So we have the flavors array initialized to num flavors. That'll give us the 10 elements, and I've populated it on the spot, okay, in the order that you saw in the Excel, in the Excel spreadsheet. And now, with that out of the way, I'm going to add a parallel array called calories. Okay, again, initialized to num flavors. Parallel arrays are always going to have the exact same number of elements, otherwise they're not parallel. That's the definition of a parallel array in that every item in one array has a corresponding element in another array. You never have one that doesn't have a match, okay? So, I have my calories array, and then I very carefully populated the calories for each of the flavors. Order matters. The mango is first. That's the 200 calories for the mango. The salted caramel, caramel is second. 350 for the salted caramel. Chocolate chip, chocolate chip. I'm being very careful. Okay, and so now that the arrays are populated, I'm going to print the data to the console, all right? And I, um, I, before I start with the loop, I'm just going to loop through the arrays in parallel and print the contents. Uh, but before I've done that, I, um, before I do that, I've, I've added a couple of lines for column headers, so it kind of looks like our Excel spreadsheet. I'm using set W here so that our columns line up nicely. So for the flavor, for example, I'm going to print that flavor in a um, field width of 20 characters, which is enough for even the longest flavor here, probably this one. Um, so we'll put the flavor in a width, a field width of 20 characters wide. I will left align. It's typical to left align text and then right align numbers. So that's what I'm doing here, left aligning the text for the flavor. And then I'm also going to put the calories per serving in a, um, a column 20 characters wide. I mean, the, the calories are just numbers. I don't need 20 characters, but I do need a wide column for the, the header. The, this is kind of, this is a lot light, wider than the actual numbers themselves. So, um, and then I'm, I'm right aligning the, uh, right aligning the numbers, which is typical, typical formatting. And uh, so then I'm home free. Once those column headers are printed, I'm going to loop through my arrays in parallel. And, uh, you know, I'm using the same set W. Well, let me talk about the loop header first. Loop counter is I, starting I at zero. Very important. Your loop counter 
values as the loop is looping have got to coincide perfectly with the array subscripts, in this case 0 through 9. So I start i at, at 0. I keep going while i is less than num flavors, which will take i to 9, all right, which is where we want it. Num flavors is 10. Remember, we're going less than num flavors. And then incrementing, of course. So that's our loop header. And then the body of the loop is just a single statement here. I'm repeating the same widths, the set w of 20, just so everything lines up perfectly. Left aligning the flavor, right aligning the, the uh, calories. But look at this. The flavors coming out of the flavors array, all right, loop counter as array index. Super important technique. And then it was easy to do with the flavor. Now it's easy to do with the calories, too. This is what I mean. If you can write a program to loop through one array, it's easy to just add another array. It's just more of the same. So there's really nothing new or earth-shattering here in this, in this program, in this video. So there's my calories array, loop counter, once again, as array index, just processing these arrays in parallel. And that's it. Let me run the program. And there they are. See, everything is lined up nicely with the set W. Uh, we have all of the flavors, all of the respective calories, and the data looks good.